Hello. I wonder if you know who Simon Baines is? Probably not. He's there to try and take heat off Pretty Patel. He is the illegal migration minister. Now, I don't really know whether that could actually be a legal job, because from my point of view, I don't think there is such a thing as an illegal migrant as such, or at least it means something slightly different to what I think the present government believes it means. Now, if you look at Europe, there were 70,000 applications for asylum across Europe in May. And uh, it, takes, uh, it takes two years to process that application. There were, oh goodness, six, 506,000 cases pending across Europe by the end of May. Now, if you look at Britain, there were 63,089 asylum applications by uh, June or the beginning of June 2022. And there were over 93,000 cases pending. And some of these are going back to April 2006. So well below, well below the uh, planned time that Europe would process uh, asylum applications. Now, I happen to know that if Europe is genuinely committed to that two-year time frame, uh, that is certainly a new commitment, and it certainly wasn't achieving that um, a number of years ago when I was monitoring these things and actively involved in it. So I don't know. But uh, as for Britain, this seems slightly disgraceful that we have so many people who have applied for asylum and haven't been processed. And that some of these go back to 2006. So is that Pretty Patel's responsibility or is that Simon Bain's responsibility? I don't know. Uh, you know, um, we, 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 the propaganda which is put out is that we are overwhelmed with asylum seekers. Well, actually, we're not. Turkey takes in 3.7 million refugees. It's given space to 3.7 million refugees. That makes us look rather pootling, frankly. Though an asylum seeker in Britain, who has no right to work, uh, is given about five pounds, 65 pounds per day for food and clothing. So if you multiply that by, um, well, 93,081 for the cases pending, that will give you a rough estimation of how much we are paying out on a daily basis, that's apart from accommodation, to those asylum seekers. And presumably we then have to add the 63,089 who have been registered as applying since uh, by the end of June 2022. Now I have, I have to emphasize there is no such thing as an illegal asylum seeker. An asylum seeker is somebody who's entered into a legal process uh, of an application predicated on the 1951 Refugee Convention that we are signatories to. So if we want to change that, we would have to change that convention or we'd have to quit that convention. And an unsuccessful asylum seeker is not immediately illegal or bogus. They're simply unsuccessful, as I think Kofi Annan pointed out some years ago. An illegal migrant... In other words, the people that Simon Baines should be interested in. An illegal migrant is somebody who will have exhausted all the legal resources for staying in our country and who, in addition, has failed to leave the country by the requisite date. At that point, they would become an illegal migrant. Now, uh... There should be quite a lot of those, I presume, if, um, if 
the uh, propaganda is to believe that so many people are applying bogusly. And uh, Albania, a country I very much like, is apparently at the top of this bogus list. So much so that Albanian police are now going to be drafted in to work at the ports in Britain. Interesting. Uh, so we're going to have more foreigners coming into our country doing the work that we can't do. And meanwhile, uh, and presumably we're going to be paying them, and meanwhile we still don't seem to have increased the number of people who are working in the home office and the foreign office and processing these applications. So this year, or indeed since Brexit began, since Brexit began, 21 illegal migrants were deported from Britain. So Simon Baines, presumably, his job was to monitor those 21 illegal migrants. So Simon Baines' job, presumably, I don't know how much he's paid, but presumably we should add that to the spurious costs of trying to evacuate people to Rwanda. I don't understand how so few people can command such enormous sums of money when we are facing a serious crisis in terms of energy and cost of living. It seems to beggar all description. More than that, if you monitor, as I do, what is being said, then you will find that people are now openly saying that uh, this migrant crisis is an invented concept. Of course it's an invented concept. We do not have a migrant crisis. We have a number of people who are applying for um, refugee status or asylum in our country because they may, for example, have relatives here or because they may have taken advantage of the worldwide global phenomenon which is English as a foreign language, which we have promoted. And they speak English. So either we have to stop promoting English as a foreign language uh, or we have to ensure that people's relatives cannot come here. Or we just have to employ more people to process all these applications. Because at the moment, we have such a backlog of applications that we must be, we must be looking rather foolish when we compare our backlog of applications with the backlog of, with the backlog of applications in most European countries. It's not about how many people are applying for asylum, but about how slowly we are, how slowly we, we process those applications. We seem to be monumentally useless. And we seem to be poking the finger of blame at anybody else who happens to be around. The French, the Rwandans, the Ugandans, the Albanians, the Turks, it doesn't matter. Everybody is responsible for this problem except for us. There is only one solution to this problem, and that is to employ more people to process these applications. At least then we will know who is or who is not staying here illegally. And then maybe Simon Baines or whatever his name is can actually do a real job.